Hey everybody, Mike Gombrich coming at you again. Uh, really on a roll, I've got like three videos in a row now, and some of you may even be tired from hearing from me. Uh, um, it is June 5th, and today's video is all about fear. Um, fear, otherwise referred to by as Grant Cardone as quit being a bitch. <laughs> um, you know, when I was listening to uh, the 10x rule on, on the, uh, the audiobook, Grant actually talks about fear and, and describes it as quit being a bitch. And he's like, you know, my editor wouldn't let me put that in the book, but it's an audio book, so I get a little bit more free will. And um, I want to talk about fear because I, I had a conversation today with someone very near to me, and it, it really put into perspective how two people can have the same end goal and the same destination and go in total opposite directions. Okay? So, for instance, okay, I am testing an ad agency and, you know, we're having this conversation and I'm, I'm very excited. I'm like, okay, well, you know what, if it doesn't work, you know, okay, you know, Grant Cardone, commit first, figure shit out later go, run a test, blah, 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 have all this stuff, and the other person is talking about fear, what if, and doubts, and everything, and it's it, it, it's well-earned because I have made a lot of mistakes and spent a lot of money that I did not have and went into debt and really kind of just spiraled downhill, and it, it's fair, but it, it really put into perspective the difference in how different people think, okay, and it really brought up um, a couple of passages from, you know, Millionaire Mind, if, if any of you haven't read it, um, it's by T. Harvecker, it's probably at the list of, like, all-time greatest personal development books, everybody and their mother has read it, you know, T. Harvecker is one of the greatest motivational thinkers and, and foremost philosophers of our time, to be totally honest with you. And he talks about the difference between how poor people think and how rich people think. And there is one main difference that, for whatever reason, is always the first one that I think of. And it's the first one that I want you to think of. Okay? Poor people play to not lose. Okay? And to give you an example, again, as most of you know, I'm a stockbroker. Okay? So, when I speak to clients who just want to keep their cash. They want to keep it safe. Oh, I don't want to lose it. I worked really hard for my $50,000. And you did. And I'm not taking that away from you. I'm not taking it away from anybody. If you have $12 that you worked your ass for and you're like, I got to keep this, look, you worked hard for it. And I get it. I, I get your viewpoint, okay? But if you compare their assets of someone who is trying to just not lose keep the cash, put it in a low yield CD, you know, get 3% and be very happy because they're not going to lose any money. That's great. You know what? This is your life. Whatever makes you comfortable and you happy, you do. But if you want more out of life, you have to go to the opposite side. And here is where T. Harvecker compares the poor to the rich. Okay. Poor, you're playing not to lose. The rich are playing to win. Okay? Now, some of you may really have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. You're like, not losing and winning are synonymous. They are synonymous, but there is a difference. Okay? And I liken it to tennis, because I played tennis in high school, believe it or not. Okay? When people are ahead in a match, they tend to hit safer shots. Okay? They don't hit it as hard. They don't take as many risks. More often than not, that person will then lose the match because the other person is like, well, damn, I got to go at him, you know, and they're going back and forth and it's, it's crazy, okay, and that person goes and more often than not, they will win the match, okay? What changed between the person who was winning and the person who is no longer winning, okay? They are the same person. Person A with $50,000 has every chance to invest in the same things as person B with $50,000. Person A doesn't want to lose any money, keeps it in cash, $50,000. Person B, 
person B says, you know what? I'm playing to win. You know, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do my research and I'm gonna play intelligently, but I'm playing to win and I'm playing to kill. And they're gonna invest. And you know what? You're not always gonna win. Okay? I personally have only ever picked one stock that did not go down. Or excuse me, did not go up. Okay? Um, I've been very fortunate, but I also, you know, I'm I'm very meticulous. Okay? If you play to not lose, you will never win. Okay, let me say that again. If you play to not lose, you will never win. And that's because you are afraid. There is fear going on in you that is causing you to not take action. Okay? For those of you that don't know what fear actually stands for, fear stands for false experiences appearing real, F-E-A-R, okay? What if is by far the worst thing you can ever say to yourself? Because you know what 99% of people say? What if, insert negative, okay? What if it doesn't work? What if I lose all my money? What if you walk outside and get in a car crash and you get hit by a bus and then lightning strikes and the tornado picks you up and flies you 20 feet away? You're still going to get out, go outside. What's the difference? You just rationalize one versus the other. Let me tell you what. What if it works? What if it works? Then what? Then, ah. the holy gates open, and your life is completely changed. And then let's talk about the opposite. Let's, 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 I'll play your game. What if it doesn't work? What is the worst case scenario? Okay. What is the worst case scenario? Now, I, I actually learned this trick from Tim Ferriss. And again, you'll, you'll see that not a lot of my ideas are original. I'm just, I'm a scholar. I, you're a gentleman and a scholar. You, you know, I, I like to read and learn, okay? Which is what you should be doing too. But Tim Ferriss says, if you come up with the worst case scenario and you really think about it, it makes it easier because you, fi- you see not only kind of how crazy it is, but you now have the absolute worst case scenario so you have nothing to fear because you know if you're progressing towards it. It makes it real, Okay? So, you know, I would never suggest doing something that would put you or your family in danger because that is stupid, okay? What I would suggest, however, is that if you're considering an investment in, let's say, a business opportunity or purchasing some real estate or whatever it is, okay, there is a risk and there is some fear, okay? Don't let it consume you. Think about the absolute worst case scenario. Let's say, you know, you you join a business opportunity, Okay, and it's yeah I don't know five thousand dollars whatever it is okay. Spend some money on advertising, do some things, blah blah blah. Comes along and it's like hey you know you got to spend a thousand dollars on advertising. You're like oh well what if what if I don't get it back? That's true sure. What what happens if you don't get it back? Really okay and I'm not going to go into this because I don't know your situation. But what happens if it doesn't work? genuinely what happens don't say oh well you know the world's going to come to an end and i'm going to go bankrupt blah 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 no genuinely okay let's you know let let's take that example okay $1000 on advertising it doesn't work what happens you're out $1000 that sucks but it stops there okay if you auctioned off everything on this one chance, okay, it's a little bit different. But then it's, you know, there, there are so many other things. It's not just, you know, variable A and variable B. But, you know, if, if you have $2,000 to invest and you do some research and you're like, I don't know, this I mean, this looks good, it looks legit, it's reputable, whatever, and you're like, oh, well, what if it fails? What if it works, dude? What if it works beyond your wildest dreams. What if hinders you? Okay. Grant Cardone, again, in his book, talks about 
taking action before you can think about the fear. Commit first, figure your shit out later. Okay? That's what I did with a coach I just hired. You know what? I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to get the money from. Not not immediately. But you know what? I'll, I'll figure it out. I committed to it. And you know what? I'm already moving forward. Okay? That's the difference between playing to not lose and playing to win. Because you know what? At the end of the day, if you lose everything and you have to start over, I personally find that it's better than wondering, what if I tried it? What if I invested? What if this? What if that? I would rather fail and fall on my face and fucking scrape it up and just be absolutely terrible than to not know. And that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to understand that fear is not real, okay? It's scary, but it's not real. It's like being afraid of the boogeyman. It's scary because you're thinking about it. What if it works? I want you to keep those four words in mind always. What if it works? Okay, so this video is going on like 11 and a half minutes. I got on a crazy rant. Um, just, a, just a crazy, crazy busy day. So again, I appreciate every each and one of you. Please like this this video, share it, comment. Again, find me on Facebook, add me on Twitter, Snapchat me. I don't care. Just let me know how you're doing. Say hi. Say hey, Mike, what's up? So again, I hope you guys have a great day. Coming up on the weekend, tomorrow will be my last video of the week. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope to hear from you and have a good night.